we have one more little practice to do um, as we get ready to close. Um, if you go to a Zen center to practice, and they teach you the proper posture to sit very straight and hold the mudra of your hands, which is a circle that holds the world. And then very often at the beginning of the sitting, you take the bodhisattva vows, which begin, sentient beings are numberless, I vow to save them all, and a whole series like that, um, which is a beautiful thing to do, um, except it's a little bit confusing because even after you take such a vow, you may notice that the members of your family don't want to be saved by you, right? <laughs> so it has to have some other meaning than going around and saving people. And it's deeper meaning, it's really some mystery to understand, is an invitation to set the compass of your heart in a particular direction that says even if the sun arises in the west and the world turns um, in unexpected ways, you have made a sacred intention or a vow or set a direction that I intend to bring whatever it is, compassion or kindness or awakening or whatever is of value to you, um, no matter what happens into this world. And you will have trouble. Anybody not have trouble? Just raise your hand, you can have your money back, right? Okay, so it's how it works, right, the human incarnation. There is a beautiful modern bodhisattva vow that beloved poet Diane Ackerman has written um, that goes, in the name of daybreak and the eyelids of morning and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs, I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred but offer myself humbly as a, as a guardian na of nature, a healer of misery, a messenger of wonder, and an architect of peace. And that's about as cool a bodhisattva vow as I've ever heard. Um, what I would like to ask you to do, and we'll do it in three little steps, is to take the kind of learnings that you just spoke of so beautifully in your group, to allow the vision or inspiration or the way that people from Parkland who carried with so much dignity and presence the fire that they've carried and walked through, you know, or the, the kind of remarkable stories we've heard of people being willing to face within their family or their community or the world the difficulties and find that courage and resources to say, there is a way to move through this. And, and, and set the course of our life and the world um, anew. So I'd like you to take a minute or two, we'll be quiet, to reflect if on this day as we finish Wisdom 2.0 with all that's nourished or reminded or touched you, if you were to set a vow or a sacred intention um, or a direction for your heart and your life, what would it be? And it doesn't have to be a big, long essay or poem. It might be as simple as, I vow to be kind, but it might be something more than that. So let your eyes close and take a minute or so to reflect. Let your eyes open again. 
this is already considered to be a very important or valuable practice because it's tuning your heart and your best intention together in some way to help direct your life. Now the second step to make it come more fully alive is to put it in your phone <laughs> or write it down. I mean, we are Wisdom 2.0, baby, you know. <laughs> and what better use for the technology than to write down your bodhisattva vow, whatever it happens to be. So find your own way to record it for yourself. You can write it if, you're, if that's the technology you prefer. So finish up for now as best you can. You can add more later if you wish. And now there's a third step in making this really come alive for you. And that is a kind of very um, simple and attentive conversation. The Sufis talk about something called the sobet, which means a conversation of the heart. It's not the kind we usually have when we meet people, but it's a, a deeper kind of listening. And so what I'd like to invite you to do is to turn to one or maybe two people near you in groups of two or three, and without a lot of conversation, more with a kind of respectful listening, read the intention that you've written, if you're comfortable doing it, and also listen to the others and maybe offer a little bow after you hear each one because there's somebody saying, this is what really matters to me. Go ahead. Okay. Um, 
Oui. Let yourself finish up. Thank your partners. Turn back. Let me ask for a moment as you turn back, those of you finish up. It's not our usual conversation. How was that for you? to hear that or to speak that. Anyone want to say there's a mic here for, you know, two or three people, either how it was or what was the intention that you set? Does anyone feel like speaking? It Somehow hearing from one another can be a beautiful thing. See one person, two coming up, please. Yes. Hi. Yeah, there's something about saying it in front of so many people that makes the vow even more pertinent, but I put, uh, I vow to engage with the miracles. And uh, it was um, a powerful practice. Thank you. Thank you. A couple more. I vow to be an instrument of spreading happiness across the globe. Oh, I want to ring the bell after each of these. It's like a temple. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jack. Uh, just hearing it out loud helped make it more real for me. And uh, I vow to be courageous, tenacious, and relentless as I act on what God is calling me to do. Thank you. Okay, these last three, we'll take them all. Beloved Jack, it was absolutely delicious. <laughs> Thank you. I vow to live every day as my first day and as my last day with the balance of compassion, wisdom, and courage. So I kind of have two. One, one is to be love, but then I just have to say this part. Um, last night at the party, there were these like ladies fairy ladies, I don't know who they were, but um, I went up to them to ask for, you had to give one question, right? And the one lady was just like, she just said to be in your yumminess. And I just thought, I thought that was really crazy, but I want to be in my yumminess. <laughs> You can feel, as I do, perhaps, that we've turned into a family, you know. And families are problematic at times, but gorgeous, and it's wonderful. I thank you for your vows, for your heart's intentions, and now I want to bring Soren back on stage um, and acknowledge that in some way his vision, um, whether he makes it as an explicit vow or not, there's something about his imagination and his honesty and vulnerability and a kind of... Um, I always wondered, how is it that Soren's able to talk to so many people across so many different dimensions? He's comfortable with the staff and with the billionaire tech 
people and with the political people and so forth. And there's something about you where you're real. And hmm. you're also... Um, I was not told to come out here for this, but you're, go ahead. You're, you're, <laughs> I said Jack needs you. You're kind, yeah. of, you're kind of trustworthy, you know, okay. in some way. People feel it. Um, and so together you, I mean, you already made your vow because I can feel mm -hmm. it, whether you made mm -hmm. it consciously or not, and we've been part of things together for a long time. And it feels like somehow now we've come together and mm -hmm. there's a whole community that are following yeah. um, not just following you, but following in an invitation that you've made that we do something really beautiful and magnificent together. And I thank you, mm, Soren, thank you. Thank and, you. and all of you. Thank you. Thank you.